every plane, bike, car, lawnmower is just passing by us today. Hi everyone, my name is Saba and I'm a registered dental hygienist if you don't know me. If you do know me and you're back, thank you so much. I'm glad to have you back. So I asked you guys on Instagram to send me your questions and today I'm going to go over them and try to answer as many as I can. By the way, if you don't follow me on Instagram and you want to, it's the tooth files. I try to share more of my everyday life and answer questions on Instagram and I would love to have you there. I took a screenshot of all the questions so let's get started. The first question is, should you brush before or after breakfast? So ideally you would brush before having your breakfast. The reason behind it is that every time you eat or drink, your mouth gets acidic trying to break down and digest that food. Brushing your teeth in that acidic environment can potentially do more harm than good because your enamel is just not as strong in an acidic environment and you will be mechanically scrubbing your teeth and potentially damaging your enamel in the long run. So if you can, try to brush your teeth before having your breakfast. Alright, so the next question is, what is the proper brushing routine? Honestly, the one that you will stick to. You should brush your teeth twice a day and floss at least once a day. If you have these habits already down and you want to improve your at-home care routine even more, here's an ideal sequence of brushing, flossing, and using mouthwash if mouthwash is part of your daily routine. It is best to start your routine with flossing. This will loosen the plaque and disrupt the bacteria in between your teeth. After that, if you use mouthwash, you would rinse your mouth with fluoridated or an antiseptic mouthwash. And your last step is to brush your teeth, don't rinse your mouth after, and just spit out the toothpaste. The reason behind it is that you want the active ingredients in your toothpaste that protect your teeth against cavities to stay on your teeth for as long as possible. Next question is, should you floss before or after brushing? I kind of answered this in the first question. So ideally, you want to floss first to loosen that plaque, then brush your teeth and don't rinse your mouth. But if you don't like the feeling of not rinsing your mouth with water, or you just prefer to floss after, that's okay too. By the way, I have a video on a cool trick you can use to rinse your mouth and still get that fluoride in between your teeth. I will link it down below so you can check it after. The next question is, can mouthwash give you cavities? So if you haven't seen it, there was a video that was trending on Instagram and TikTok that using mouthwash gives you cavities. <sighs> it doesn't. So mouthwash does not give you cavities. But let me tell you why. So what that post was kind of trying to communicate was that if you rinse your mouth with mouthwash after using fluoride toothpaste, it will wash away that fluoride and that's why you're getting cavities. But that's not necessarily true. Yes, using a mouthwash after brushing your teeth can dilute that fluoride toothpaste, but here are a couple of things to remember. If you're using fluoridated mouthwash, yes, you might be diluting your toothpaste, but that mouthwash already has fluoride in it. Maybe you will get less exposure to it, but using that mouthwash does not give you cavities. All right, how to tell if you have a cavity? The shortest way to know if you have a cavity or dental decay is to visit your dentist and dental hygienist. The most common place for getting cavities is in between your teeth which will be impossible to see with just your eyes. Your dental hygienist and your dentist can take dental x-rays and take a look at your mouth and tell you for sure if you have a cavity and how to treat it. How can I keep my teeth white? They keep getting yellow months after using whitening strips. So whether you're using whitening strips or getting your teeth professionally whitened by your dentist, the results are not permanent and you will see some yellowing and discoloration as time goes by. But there are things that affect how fast your teeth are turning yellow and steps you can take to help delay that. Number one is to have a good oral hygiene routine. The plaque that builds up on your teeth will make your teeth look yellow. So make sure to brush your teeth twice a day and floss every day. Investing in a good electric toothbrush will go a long way. An electric toothbrush can help you remove that plaque more effectively. Second thing to do is to limit how much coffee, tea, and red wine you're having. These foods have tannins, which is what is causing that stain on your teeth. So try to limit how much of them you're taking 
and rinse your mouth with water or drink water after to help wash away this stain. And lastly, if you smoke, consider quitting smoking. Smoking causes dark brown stains on your teeth that can actually get soaked up by your teeth and turn into much tougher stains. And on the same note, someone else asked, how can I keep my teeth clean while drinking coffee at work? The best and most practical advice that I can give you is to drink water and rinse your mouth with water after you have your coffee. Ideally, you would wait 30 minutes and then brush your teeth, but if that's not a possibility for you, make sure to hydrate throughout the day and you should be fine until you get home and you can brush. Can you whiten veneers? Unfortunately, no. Anything that's not a natural tooth, like your crowns, veneers, implants, bridges, and your white fillings will not change their color with teeth whitening. And that's why a lot of times, if you're about to get crowns, veneers, bridges, and white fillings, you have the option of whitening your teeth first, waiting two weeks, and your dentist will be able to match the color of your veneers, crown, etc. to your teeth at their whitest shade. What ingredients my toothpaste should or shouldn't have? This depends kind of on your specific needs and preferences. A lot of people are sensitive or allergic to SLS or sodium lauryl sulfate. This is the ingredient that makes your toothpaste foamy. So a lot of brands offer SLS free toothpaste if you're trying to go a more natural way. In addition to SLS, if you're trying to stay natural, I would stay away from toothpaste that have dyes and sulfates and stay away from charcoal. Charcoal is natural, but it's horrible for your teeth. Do not use charcoal toothpaste. If your teeth are sensitive, the ingredients you're looking for will be potassium nitrate and or fluoride. Also, fluoride toothpaste help protect your teeth against cavities. If you're against using fluoride toothpaste, make sure that your toothpaste has nanohydroxyapatite and xylitol. Nanohydroxyapatite has been showing some promising results for protecting teeth against cavities, not as strong as fluoride, and there's definitely more research needed. But if you're against using fluoride, make sure you are using toothpaste with nanohydroxyapatite in them. And xylitol helps prevent plaque buildup and protect your teeth. Next question is brushing with baking soda? Question mark? Baking soda is the OG toothpaste and tooth whitening powder that a lot of people are actually still using now. But the problem with just using the plain baking soda that you buy from your grocery store is the amount that you will be using is not regulated. On top of that, there is no fluoride or nanohydroxyapatite or xylitol added to plain baking soda. So there is no anti-cavity or anti-gingivitis ingredients in that plain baking soda. If you don't want to use toothpaste at all, you can just brush your teeth with plain water. What removes the plaque on your teeth is the mechanical action of your toothbrush bristles. I have dark triangles in between my teeth. Is it periodontitis? Not necessarily. Periodontitis is a disease that's caused by a certain type of bacteria, and it will infect your gums and the bones holding your teeth in your jaw. If you have periodontal disease, it is common to see gum recessions, which then you will see black triangles in between your teeth because there's no gum to fill in that space. But this is not the only sign of periodontal disease, and just because you have gum recession doesn't automatically mean you have periodontitis. Other causes for gum recessions are if you're grinding and clenching constantly, if you're brushing too hard, if you had braces even, that can sometimes cause gum recession. So I wouldn't necessarily jump to periodontitis just because you have those black triangles in between your teeth. The best thing to do is to visit your dentist and dental hygienist and consult them to find out what is really causing those recessions. How often should you go for professional cleanings? This depends on your specific mouth. If your teeth and gums are healthy, you would go about twice a day. Twice a day. Don't go twice a day. <laughs> if your gums and teeth are healthy, you would go for a professional cleaning twice a year or every six months. But some people need more than that. For example, if you have periodontal disease or gum disease, your maintenance cleanings will be three to four times a year. And some people may build up stains, biofilm, and calculus faster, and in that case, they would need more frequent cleanings. Again, this depends on your unique situation, and your dental hygienist and dentist can help you determine how often you should go for professional cleaning. Is water flosser necessary? Not for everyone. Water flossers are great for implants, crowns, bridges, braces, or people who have deeper pockets around their teeth. 
but dentistry is not a one size fits all. Something that works great for one person may not be necessarily for another person or even work for them. So talk to your dental hygienist, ask them if this is something that you can use to help improve your oral health. I personally love using water flosser in addition to my regular flossing and brushing. But if you're unsure about it, definitely talk to your hygienist first and ask them if this is something that can improve your oral health. How to treat dry mouth. Dry mouth or xerostomia can be caused by multiple things. It can sometimes be that you're simply dehydrated. In that case, drinking water will help treat that xerostomia. Also, if you're having too much caffeine, alcohol, spicy food, or you're smoking, you can experience dry mouth. Again, drinking water will help alleviate that. Also, consider diet and lifestyle modification. A lot of medications cause dry mouth as their side effect. Medications that you might be taking for high blood pressure, antidepressant, and the list goes on and on. So your dry mouth might be caused by the medications you are taking. Aside from drinking water, other treatments for dry mouth are using mouthwashes that are intended for treating dry mouth. Axe Dry Mouth, Gum Hydrol, and Biotin are all good brands that have mouthwashes specifically for people who have dry mouth. Okay. I have small lines and crack on my bottom front teeth. What causes them and how to reduce them? So without seeing your mouth and knowing your medical history, basically being your oral care provider, it is very hard to diagnose. But based on these descriptions, what I think you're talking about is caused by constant grinding and clenching of your teeth. These are called craze lines, which are tiny hairline fractures that are shallow and a lot of time happen on your bottom and top front teeth. As I said, the most common cause for getting these craze lines is constant grinding and clenching of your teeth. One thing you can do to help prevent these lines from happening or getting bigger is to use night guards. That night guard will sit on your teeth and prevent your teeth from rubbing on top of each other. Is it safe to go for dental cleanings while pregnant? Absolutely yes and it's so necessary to do so. During pregnancy, on top of everything else that's happening in your body, hormonal changes make you more prone to gum inflammation or gingivitis and experiencing bleeding gums. And that's why it's so important to visit your hygienist and dentist regularly for cleanings. Gingivitis and periodontitis is still a disease. If you have the bacteria that causes periodontal disease in your mouth and you're pregnant, not only it will affect your health and your mouth, it can also affect your pregnancy outcomes. Preterm birth and low term birth have been linked to periodontal disease. So yes, absolutely necessary and safe to visit your dental hygienist for cleanings during pregnancy. Now, depending on how far you are in your pregnancy, certain procedures like dental x-rays, extractions, and elective procedures can be postponed until after birth. Again, this depends on your specific needs and conditions, and your dentist and dental hygienist can help you determine which procedures are safe to do while pregnant. Next question. When should kids do their first dental exam? This is a great question. Your kids should have their first dental exam after their first tooth comes out, which is usually that bottom front tooth, or before they turn one. And these appointments will be fairly short. It will help your kids get used to the dental setting and prevent dental anxiety later in life. And your kids' dentist and dental hygienist can make sure that the teeth are developing properly and their teeth and gums are healthy. Okay, next question. What toothpaste should I use for my kids? The toothpaste that you're using for your kids, please make sure that it has fluoride in it. The fluoride in the toothpaste will strengthen their tiny teeth and prevent cavities. Now, you don't need to use a lot of toothpaste. If your child is younger than three years old, you want to give them about the size of a grain of a rice of toothpaste, and if they are older, you want to use about the size of a pea. So not a lot of toothpaste at all, and help them with brushing and give them a flavor of toothpaste that they will like. I know Hello Brand has a really great toothpaste for kids, so does Crest and Orogel. So whichever cartoon character they like, just make sure it has fluoride in it and help them. And last question is inflamed gums. Help. Inflamed gums or gingivitis happens when plaque and bacteria sits underneath your gums and causes inflammation. If you have gingivitis, you will notice that your gums are puffy, red, they bleed easily, and they might even be itchy. Gingivitis is the earliest stage of gum disease. 
it is reversible and treating it is actually fairly easy. The biggest thing you can do to help treat and prevent gingivitis is to take care of your teeth and have a good oral hygiene routine. What I mean by that is to brush your teeth properly twice a day, possibly invest in an electric toothbrush and floss in between your teeth at least once a day. And if it has been more than six months since you last saw your dental hygienist, this is a good time to go for a cleaning. Your dental hygienist will remove all that hardened plaque that is sitting on your teeth and causing gum inflammation and help you bring your gums back to health. Side note, I know that dental insurances and dental visits can put a strain on your budget. And if this is not something that's affordable for you at the moment, one thing you can do is to look at dental hygiene schools and dental schools in your area. They will be able to provide the care you need to you at a much lower cost. All right, I've been talking for such a long time, so I'm gonna end the video here. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Maybe give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions that I didn't answer, put them in the comments below. You can also find me on Instagram at the tooth files. I would love to have you there. Take care of yourself, take care of your teeth, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.